Owl Moon by Jane Yolen and illustrated by John Schoenher. Copyright 1987. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blow, long and low, like a sad, sad song. See, there they go, leaving their house. There's the barn, and somewhere behind there, back there, is the train. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs, for the real, a real long time. When their voices faded away, it was quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. And there they go, on toward the woods, and there's a fox. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and the little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up, and my short red shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If I, you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been want, waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up, as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask's mask. Then he called, Hoo, 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 the sound of a great horned owl. Hoo, 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 hoo. There's, there's the girl and her father. And they said some mouse in a log. Again he called out, and then again. After each call, he was silent, and for a moment we both listened. But there was no answer. Pa shrugged, and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. And my brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. See, waiting for Tristo. There's a raccoon in a tree. We walked on. I could feel the cold, as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back. And my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. There we go on walking toward the woods. We went to the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, but the scarf of it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kind of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. There they are, walking in the, w in the middle of the woods. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of a clearing, and the snow above it was wetter than the milk in a cereal bowl. There we are, they've arrived in the clearing. See, there's a deer. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand to sound. I put my mittens over the scarf and listened hard. And then Pa called, Hoo, 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 I listened and looked so hard, my ears hurt, and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call it again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Hoo, 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 hoo. Ooh. Pa almost smiled. Then he called back, hoo, 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 hoo. Just as if he and the uh, as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf off my mouth, and he almost smiled too. And there we are. Almost out here, the owl he must be getting close. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with heat in our mouths. 
the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooed again. They are in the meadow, and there's the owl. Getting close. Getting close. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was laying on the grass. See? So Pa turned on his flashlight and the owl's dead there he is. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. See? We've come face to face. We have in contact with the owl and so now for a few minutes. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk, I can even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. See, that must be a squirrel. And there goes the owl, back into the woods. When you go owl, you don't need words, or warm, or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on sound wings under a shining owl moon. So there we go. Back home, I must be on. This must be the light. I must be going home. Go straight to bed. This book was worth 1988 Caldecott Metal Hen. That must be the owl flying through the night. The end.